My name is Nicholas Riccardi. I'm a political reporter for the Associated Press, and in the courtroom behind me, we just finished more than four hours in a week, first part of a week-long hearing on a um, challenge to whether Donald Trump can run for president again. The plaintiffs in the case are citing the 14th Amendment, which doesn't allow anyone who is, quote, engaged in insurrection, close quote, against the Constitution from holding office if they swore an oath to uphold it before. They argued the January 6th attack and Trump's attempts to overturn his 2020 election loss mean that he's no longer eligible to run for president. They want him stricken from the ballot in Colorado, and if successful here, they'll take that ruling to 49 other states. The Trump campaign says it's a frivolous attempt to thwart the will of the voters and to uh, short circuit the democratic process. The day began with something of a legal bang as the uh, Trump team filed a motion to recuse targeting the judge, Sarah Wallace, who was appointed just last year by the Democratic governor of Colorado, Jared Polis. They contended that she's conflicted in the case and that a $100 donation she made last year before she took the bench to a uh, liberal group that says on its website its goal is to stop violent insurrectionists from taking office uh, means that she's she's irreconcilably conflicted um, over the key legal issues of the case. The judge said she didn't remember the donation, but acknowledged that the records show she made it, um, that she doesn't have an opinion on whether or not the January 6th attack was a, in fact an insurrection as defined by the um, 14th Amendment. That's the legal issue in the case. So she denied the motion recuse, and she's going to continue to sit um, in judgment on this case. Testimony began with um, an officer of the Washington, D.C. Police Department. Uh, Dan Hodges testified about defending the Capitol on January 6th. He was attacked and, and fairly badly hurt. And then Democratic Congressman Eric Swalwell uh, was testifying when we broke for lunch also about the experiences of that day. The officer mainly recounted how he was steadily pushed back inside into the U.S. Capitol and inside the corridor by a mob. He, um, he used the term mob and he said that even the people in that crowd who weren't directly engaging in violence were basically abetting the folks who were engaging in violence by giving them cover and making it impossible to control the situation. Whoever loses in this court will inevitably appeal the ruling from the judge to probably the Colorado Supreme Court and whoever loses at the Colorado Supreme Court will probably appeal to the U.S. Supreme Court, which has never ruled on this particular provision of the Constitution. Trump's attorneys repeatedly said in court today that this would be the first time in U.S. history that a judge would bar someone from running for president under this clause of the Constitution to uh, try and underscore the gravity of the case and also the novelty of the plaintiff's legal argument.